Whatever method you use for taking notes during meetings, it will be text-based note-taking or visual note-taking. What if I told you that there is one tool that you can use in any case? And this tool is completely free, easy to use and very powerful. Let me show you. One tool that works equally well with both types of notes is Obsidian a free, powerful and flexible app for taking notes during meetings or otherwise and for organizing them. Before we look at how this works, let's quickly install Obsidian. You can download it via the link in the description. Run the downloaded file to install Obsidian on your system. Then just start the application. Now, in order to make this work, we will need one additional plugin. But don't worry, like most plugins for Obsidian, this one is also free. And here is how you can find and install it. First, we need to enable community plugins in the Obsidian settings. Click on the settings icon in the bottom left hand corner, go to community plugins and click on turn on community plugins. Then click on browse. Search for the Excalidraw plugin, install and enable it directly in Obsidian. Once it is enabled, we are good to go. The easiest and most common way of taking notes is the outlining method. I'm sure you have used it or at least seen it before. It is entirely text-based, which makes it very easy to use in all kinds of text editors like Microsoft Word, Google Docs or, in our case, Obsidian. One advantage of writing notes in Obsidian is that you can use the markdown language for formatting your text while you are actually typing it. Contrary to editors like Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you don't have to take your hand off the keyboard, grab the mouse, select the format for each heading or list item that you want to write. Here, I'm typing my notes on the left hand side using the markdown language and you can immediately see the results on the right hand side. This is how the notes look like when you are not in editing mode. As you can see, this keeps your flow while typing and builds the document structure very quickly while still keeping it easy to read. Keep an eye on the highlighted mouse cursor you will see that it is not moving during the whole time I am actually writing this. For using the outlining method in Obsidian, we don't need any special plugins at all. The vanilla or default version of Obsidian with the already implemented and enabled core plugins is enough. If you plan to use only the outlining method for taking meeting notes, you can pretty much pick any text editor. Notepad, Notepad++, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Evernote or Microsoft OneNote to name but a few. However, this does seem unlikely. Eventually, you will find yourself in situations where plain text will not suffice. So why not use a tool that supports plain text and more visual note-taking at the same time so that you don't have to switch between these tools? Let's look at how Obsidian deals with a more visual approach like creating mind maps. Sorry to interrupt, I almost forgot, well, I did forget to quickly ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Assuming you do like it, of course. But since you're still here, the odds for that seem to be good. So in any case, thank you. I appreciate it. Mind mapping is a visual way of taking notes during meetings. While it requires a bit more effort than simple plain text notes, it is well worth it if you want to keep track of what is happening in a less rigid and more creative meeting. The prime example of mind maps is always brainstorming, but it can be useful for other things too. Here is a mind map that I created in my earlier video. To do so, I used a tool called Miro. Like plain text editors, there are many other dedicated mind mapping tools on the market. Most of them are not entirely free and, what's worse, they usually store the mind maps in a very proprietary format that can only be read by the respective application. This makes you dependent on the specific tool and requires others who may need to edit the mind map to also pay for the tool. Because of all this and considering that they don't want to switch between tools when taking different types of notes, let me show you a way to create and edit mind maps directly in Obsidian. Although Obsidian does not support mind maps out of the box, there is a very good and free community plugin called Excalidraw that we can easily install and use as you have seen in the beginning. As we already installed it earlier, let's get right into using it. To create a new drawing, you can either click on the Create New Drawing icon in the left-hand toolbar, click on any folder and then select the respective item from the context menu, or press Ctrl and P, type New Draw, 
and then select your preferred option. I will go for creating a new drawing in a new tab. All these commands can also be mapped to keyboard shortcuts to make it even easier and faster for you. Once you are in the new drawing, you will notice a new toolbar at the top of the node. This is where you can select the various shapes you want to use in your drawing. Once again, each shape is also selectable with a simple keyboard shortcut to make things faster. For example, you can press V or 1 to activate the Select tool, or you press O or 4 to select the Ellipsis tool. You get the idea. This makes it very easy and fast to switch between the different types of shapes you want to add to your mind map. Once you have your elements on the screen, you can move them around, format them in different ways, and connect them with lines and arrows. A bonus benefit of using Obsidian for doing that is that you can easily use any of your existing nodes, even if they're not drawings, and drop them into your mind map directly. And not only as normal links to the node, but as embedded content that you can edit directly in your mind map. So once again, you don't have to switch between existing nodes to edit those, but can do it directly from one place. All this makes your meeting nodes even more meaningful and allows you to reuse existing content, avoiding duplicates and, of course, version conflicts. Next up, we tackle the Cornell method. While this one is largely text-based, it does have some visual elements. This means if we want to use Obsidian for taking notes based on the Cornell method, we actually have two options. First, we can structure the document in Obsidian using, again, the Markdown language and simply prepare the different sections under their respective headings. This gives space for our cues and questions, notes, and the summary at the bottom of the page. As you probably noticed, this looks very similar to the outlining method, except that we have these three predefined sections in our structure. Now, while this contains all the elements of the Cornell template, it does not quite look like it should. So if we want to remain true to the Cornell structure of nodes, we can do this once again with Excalidraw. Here we can easily draw the necessary lines based on the Cornell templates, add the headings and then add our respective text to each section. Of course, this could also be done in tools like Microsoft Word. In fact, I prepared a Cornell template that you can download for free via the link in the description. But remember that we want to avoid tool switching. Last but not least, Excalidraw can also be used for taking notes based on the Quadrant method. The Quadrant method suggests separating your document into four quadrants dedicated to specific topics. In the top left hand corner, you write down any questions you have. These questions can be collected before the meeting or simply added during the meeting as they pop up. In the top right hand quadrant, you simply take your notes as you usually would. In the bottom left hand corner, you keep track of your personal to-dos and in the bottom right hand section, you can track action items and tasks assigned to other people. As before, we can draw the necessary lines on our note and then add the text elements as needed. And with Excalidraw, you can easily add additional graphical elements just as if you were taking notes on a normal piece of paper with the advantage of being able to move things around, erase them easily and keep adding as needed. As you can see, Obsidian is very flexible and a great tool for taking all kinds of meeting notes. And it is even better for personal knowledge management, but that's a topic for another video. I hope this quick overview gives you an idea of how Obsidian gives you flexibility when it comes to taking all kinds of notes and, once used to it, is a real productivity booster. Once you dig deeper into Obsidian, you will see that there is a bit of a learning curve but it's really not rocket science and any time you put into learning, you will get back many times over. If you have any questions about Obsidian or other productivity related topics, just leave them in the comments down below and don't forget to take a look at my growing library of templates, to which I once again left the link in the description. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. All this should allow you to save quite some time and be more productive. However, there are always more things we can do to increase our productivity, which you should really check out in this growing list of productivity tools and methods. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.